Really? Like, well, we're done. We're done. Yeah, tell you about the acting. You haven't heard this, have you? The pool table. Yeah. Well, what happened is. We had to do was Paul Venice playing lead off he's from South Bank. Yeah. And he this is you couldn't make this. So Jim Vogue couldn't even write this. He only lives next door to Lee Duffy when he was a kid. But he, he really did. When he was a four year old he kid. Like a troll. And like he went up to the Paul and said, You're gonna be the new Lee Duffy. And Paul became the top fighter yeah. of kid kids from mm. their uh, box, uh, thingy box. MMA. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. And he won everyone, he's brilliant, so he's really top fighter. But he's a lovely lad, Paul. So he picked me up and he goes up there. And Stephen's there, but Michael and the dad and them, they never go out, Ali, because I was there, they couldn't make a fuss of me and couldn't yeah. make a fuss of me. And I love them a bit, you know, the f- family. And if they needed me, I'd always be there for them, vice versa. They're the type, if you were in the middle of the fucking jungle in Berber, they could help you out. They'd, they'd mm. fucking fly over and help you. Yeah, well, he'd done it for his brother, he used to fly at the fucking. Yeah. His brother was, they were, they were in for. They were in, his brother was triple cat aid. So it was like maximum, maximum, maximum security right in America. And they had to fly, I think it was something like Albany on Isle of Wight. They had to go there to fly. And Stephen used to go all the time and see his brother John. They are like really tight family, you know, so mm. lovely family. But um, they're the same. The police hated them. Their, their family was like me and Lee. Anything that happened, Brian Cockler, he, he said, I've, I've been pulled in for that many fucking murders and mm. shootings over the years. unbelievable. And two of the murders, I was in jail. You know what I mean? Just fucking... Well, Steve was saying, but when I was listening to the audio, but there's so many stories that were in that that just fucking blew me away. It was oh, non-stop, yeah, all yeah, the shootings yeah, yeah, and yeah, robberies course. and everything. Well, theirs was even worse than I was up there, but we, we, the North East is a naughty place then. But it, was mm. like, it was like the Wild West for me and Lee were running about, but Lee, Lee Duffy was on the... I remember Lee Duffy's another thing, but my wife was there, and Lee, at the end of the night, was on the thingy with the gun going, I saw the... I was trapped with the fucking big handguns in the middle of the dance floor and every fucker ran out of the pub. Mm. And then he went in the blows one night and he shot through the toilet. The <coughs> toilet <coughs> in the toilet. So loads of stories <coughs> what are all true what is going to be in that and the stories where I went looking for the fight and how we've got pals and all that stuff. And there's, all, there's all these analogies, all oh, this happened and that happened and this happened. There's people telling me what happened in the 20-year-old. It happened 30 years ago. Really, you put what, what I thought was funny was um, when you had your vendetta with him in the beginning. <sighs> yeah. And then you just you're working out every single day. You're just thinking about fucking him up. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get every bastard. year. Oh, well, I've got to get bigger. Got to get stronger. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it was just like my yeah. hand was bad. I was thinking, oh, fuck, can't use me. I just was used to shadow box, and I'd be <laughs> taking loads of started training like mad, and yeah. I would have this other fight because when he hit, he hit me, I went down. But then I beat. I got up and got <coughs> and tried to, well, My legs were still big now, but they were monstrous mm. then. And he tried to pick me up and I just split him open and threw him on the floor. I nutted him twice, el- elbowed him, but I couldn't punch him because I had him pinned with that hand. Mm. And that finger was broke there. Still still got a bump on it now. Mm. And uh, his mate, John Fair, hit me on the head. He said, John, John, get him off me. So he'd lost the fight. When somebody shout and get him off me, you've lost yeah. on you. And then there was people in the street seeing it. They've come forward now and made statements, like, like, statements mm. to one, like Jamie, like, uh, and told the truth and said what's happened. And uh, his family saw the truth. And when I went to his house, He's come to all the truth, the brother in law, and all, so it's all come out now. But uh, you're on about your knuckles then, too, but because you're a big lad, like these skinny lads can use the elbows a lot, yeah, yeah. But it's when you're a big lad like that, you haven't got that, but no, you're, like, you're, you're fucking huge, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. But once, once, once someone said to me, I see your how, back, and it must have been literally about that fucking wide, now. yeah. When I was at my best, when I was fighting, I was very, very fast hands and all, yeah, but I was super fit. But Lee was 15 stone, I was 24, that's nearly 10 stone heavier. So it's like, say, Mike Tyson fighting, like fucking Barry McGregor or something, you know? It's just the difference is phenomenal. So you I'm not... surprised he knocked you down. Well, what it was, when you squared on, I was talking him nice, like you talk talking yeah. him, and I looked like that, and he's making he caught me with a punch. You didn't have the stance. I could have stood with my foot in front of him, I've never, ever been put down again. Yeah. That was the first time, because I've always been put your foot in front of the other, and keep your chin down, yeah. talk with your hands, your hands are ready to throw a punch. But when you stood square like that, I was only 26 at the time, and I wasn't really into uh, his psychology. Was I don't bad, care, you know, one of them, they're right in the shin yeah, you down, get, aren't you? Well, even if you're looking that way and somebody hits you, even if you yeah. even just do that to you, will fall on your backside type of thing. So exactly. even, I did see stars and, and I did hurt, but I got up and I won the fight. But then I went looking for him in a pub called um, The Commercial, which is going to be on Jamie's thing. And he knew I was looking for him and I'd beat him his, his, his girlfriend's house. Not nasty, because the brother in law came out twice, I'd been there. But when I went, there was a lad with a gun going to shoot Lee. There, it would come, he give me a lift. And I come out, I said, what are you doing with the fucking gun? He went, oh, they've told me to shoot me. Even if you lose, I'll win or draw. I went, fuck. And so I had to be up for a murder that night. And that same night, we went to Redcar and somebody had been sexually assaulting a woman or something, been grabbed or something. Mm. And the cops were everywhere. And he went, have a look underneath it. And there was two handguns under my seat and a fucking shotgun under his seat. And fucking I didn't even know. I went for the fight. Mm. And he ended up breaking his jaw. I don't blame you. The lad. 
has actually told me the story to Brian Cottle or selling on his patch, but it was mainly because he, that night I could have got life for him, yeah. you know, been a little rat, but uh, and the people who paid to have him shot and all that, they got nicked, but they all got off, because when he went, when he died, there was, I think there was something like nine people in jail, and when he died, all the charges got dropped, because they were all up for she's trying to kill Lee Duffy and stuff like that, so... A lot of when, people wanted to kill him, didn't they? Oh, yeah, well, that night, yeah. apparently Jamie told me that Lee Duffy went to the blows and he got killed. We all know that story, but up the road, there was two lads with guns waiting to shoot, and as he came out the blows, so that night, it was a He was going to have it easy, way, wasn't he? Yeah, he was going to die that night because there was two hit, hits on him that night, so... And Lee Duffy, I think his demise was when he was on the crack, because when he was on the A, like I told you, he was just like a nice lad. But the old black lads from down there. That's right, yeah, black lads come up to shoot yeah. him, they shot him, but that wasn't the ones who were waiting for him. There was somebody else waiting for another team, so it was never ended. But I'll tell you yeah. the story now. But this is a story no one knows. I've only told Jamie this one. You'll like this one. <laughs> Brains again. Lee <laughs> Duffy was, Lee Duffy was um, um, fighting in Eston with, with, with some lads, travelling lads. So somebody met a mate of mine called John. One day he's taking a fucking yeah. bag. He used to have ice cream vans. He went to meet the mate. He said, these want you to sort this Lee Duffy out. So I went and met them in a, in a pub up Gisborough. And uh, I met them up there, and they said, oh, would you be able to sort Lee Duffy out? I said, yeah, because I was looking to fight, and they knew this. So anyway, Lee Duffy that night was out, and he got shot. And when it was over, he took 5,000 5, acids off someone, and he got shot. So because he got shot that night, I found the land temple, I've stood the job. And it was nothing to do with me, but they didn't get me. I got 2,000 pounds. <laughs> No, that story nobody knows and I met him the next day and I gave the lad £200 John who took me with the ice cream lad mm. I got £2,000 but the lads who did it got caught one was from um, Newcastle way and one was from Middlesbrough they got, they got jailed for it they got six years each I think they got but they, uh, they shot him and then ran away oh wow <laughs> but they shot him but it was one of them like, like I say a little shitty gun yeah. thing, like a shotgun but it was the feed with, it was Bob Burns that blew his legs off but when I got £2,000 that night that's a first time that's they, clever they, that isn't it yeah I thought wait a minute I've sorted him out they, went, they, they don't know do they no, did he so fuck? I got the two grand <laughs> How did you feel when Lee died? Oh, it was sad. It was sad because he'd been pal, you know. Yeah. And but what it was is like, he, 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 it was in a way, I think he was glad Expected. out. He, in a way, I don't be honorable here, I think he was glad out I was in jail because people were saying, you were getting all the glory because you were kicking the doors in, you know, it's all bad, cockerel back on. He loved to be. I mean, he's another story he'll tell me no nobody knew. I took a, I got a, I, I was up after the blood. I yeah. used to rent me a car. It was only a daft little high Hyundai. They were fucking crap them days. And if he's got the wrong car, so fucking what? Yeah, it was a blue eye under this guy. One day, one yeah, day, yeah. day the low cocks in. It was for high end. Anyway, I did a I did a job for the lad, and his dad was a butcher, and I got him fifty grand back. And he went, oh, we'll just instead of being two hundred pound a month for the car, we'll just just give you give us a hundred pound. I'll about? give you the fucking I'll, car. I'll, I'll give you a brand new car. I just took it off him. Cheeky cunt took it off. The police went and said, right, I'll you just let him keep the car. But I got him fifty grand back. Yeah, I usually go half stone you on a job yeah. like that. Anyway, so anyway, I had that, that car and uh, I went, Craig Howard was his friend. Now, Craig was, was in Mr. Universe. He was sixth and seventh, eighth and ninth in Mr. Britain, top bodybuilder. But he couldn't fight. Howard the Coward, we used to call him. And uh, he, he was very, very, very switched on. He was well, like, they're that big. They can't punch, can they? The fucking yeah, well, when we went on the pads yeah. that night, on the back pads, I was, I, I, I was walk loose. You yeah. walk like stiff like a robot. You, you, you can't, the, the, the pathetic. So he's trying to punch like he's benching the big heavy weight. You snap the punches. Yeah. You see Mike Tyson, it's all flown through from the toes all the way up, you know. Yeah. And when you try to go like a big windmill, you think I'll just step back and you know you catch them. But anyway, it's Craig Howard. But he was he was I said, Why did you knock around with him? He said, Well, what it is, he says, um, he's the only one that could rock the gear up. Now we've got some coke. The first time I got out I was twenty six years old. Now he's some analog he's some things. I'll tell you this thing. So I got the coke, we went back, we had it at 84 Hampton Street, and he made it with a, it was, in them days, he made it with a baby jar. A test tube and a coat hanger. And, ah, right. abs, and it used to couldn't stick to the coat hanger. Yeah, the coat hanger, you did Yeah, that's it, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, so was, it was a bit like, like a, that's the one, it was yeah. like, fucking like, cool little water used to yeah. hot cold water. And it'd come up on the coat And hanger. not many people knew, uh, Peter, how to do it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You've got to get it right, though, because nah. you put too much baking soda in it. It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. Salty is fucking yeah. horrible. Yeah, so so anyway, I, I had to go and I went, fucking hell, he only had a bit like a little bit of dandruff, it was like on the top of it. So, nice we're talking, it? it was, not now it isn't. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I didn't dare, I wouldn't dare take it now, last to kill me. Anyway, so I had it and uh, I was all right, but then soon you have it too many times, you get paranoid. 
But um, I've lost my story now. What I was <laughs> but um, Craig Howard. Um, I'm Joseph for the Rock now, me. Oh, no. I haven't had one in years. Uh, no. Jesus Christ. No, it's no good, mate. It's horrible. But it's he said to me, Craig Howard says, when you have it, you end up being addicted to it. You know, you get addicted to it, and you, mentally, it's a mental thing. Your but, first hit, you only fucking hit. I think. Yeah, it's fucking. The you, you have one big fucking fat hit, and you might as well just put it down for yeah, the day. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Because you're not going to get any. No, you, no. You're chasing your high, aren't you? Yeah, and you get an eighth, and you do it in, and then you fucking go for another one. Nothing happens. <laughs> no. And then you think the police out there, and the yeah. cameras in here, and all sorts. But uh, yeah, I've lost my story now. What I was thinking there, but who's good at getting into it? Sorry. Sorry about. <laughs> no, I'm not you. It's myself. It's something that will lead up here. <laughs> You, so Lee Duffy was your crime partner. Yeah. You get out now, you're flying solo. How did that feel to have a crime partner out of prison? That was it. I've got to... So when I was... Come back. When, when, yes, come back. When I was, when I was with, with Lee Duffy, not sure, not sure, not sure why he to be pal, he's a boxing lad, he said uh, he had you kicking the doors in because he wanted you to go fest because you were like the human shield. And that was the thing. So when we go around the places, and I've got because I was that strong, but he was... Not clever of me, but he was streetwise more than me because I was never been in trouble in life, you know. But yeah. he'd been out of jail since he was a kid, 16 in jail and 20 odd in jail. So I was 26 at the same time as him. So I'm kicking doors and with the, the key, the big right foot, and the, we we're getting the good key. money. <laughs> yeah, the key, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm doing that, but he was like, go on, but get it, get it. And I'm thinking, anyway, fucking, I'm doing that. And then I realised I was the human fucking shield. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm in jail. Yeah, anyway, I was in jail, he, he, he knew he had to friend me, so he friended me, uh, you know. so... But he was having me going in them houses. But before that, he was only taxing dealers a minuscule of drugs. Mm. So we were going in getting kilos and all sorts in the end. You know, it was really good. But uh, he, he was, I told him what to do. When he was on the cut crack, he went on it too much. And he went from about 17 stone down to 14 and a half stone. There's a picture of him. He looks terrible. He looks like Stan Laurel, a lot of Nardy, and he looks mm. looks ill. His neck's gone, everything. I know the size of him. So he'd have been a bit like Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes... Um, he was getting beaten up by any, anyone and everyone when he, when he was past 30 because he's obviously abused his body with a drink and things like that. So Ali's demise, he even knew, I think, because he went on holiday for a while. He went up the lakes and he went to Blackpool and other places uh, for a bit of a break. And uh, he said, I think he spoke to a priest and he said, I wish I could get, you know, get back. I wish I'd never done what I didn't. I mean, and he told me another story about when he was in Liverpool. Another story, people. When he was in Liverpool, I got in there and I was in, there was a screw called Dicky, and they were all right, the screws in there with me, they were all, they were fine. But they were big fucking lads, they don't mess about Liverpool, the big fucking... The Walton, you mean? Walton, yeah, the yeah. big fucking big screws. Like, all mouses, like... Must have scored, aren't they? Oh, the proper, proper big fucking lads, they're not little, they're all big, big, about 600 screws weren't there. Yeah. So I've been there, and Mr Bolt was telling me, he said, it was odd, Billy something from here, big lad, he died not long ago. Billy Bolt? Yeah. No. Big, massive lad fight, he had a fight with Duffy in there, and he, he got the better of Duffy in the fight, and they broke it up. He was ragging him around and that, and he was telling me the thing. He said, but he thought he was the fucking bee's knees in here. And he said, we kicked the fuck out of him. And then years later, uh, like, Lee, Lee Duffy had told me that story, and years later I went to jail, and the, the screws told me the story. He said there was about eight of us kicked him all over, stamped all over him, and he was crying his eyes out. And Lee had told me that story before in 1991. So, yeah, there's a difference between one person doing it and fucking eight, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? He said, he said I've crawled up in a ball, the crying, I want to be with my mum. That was Lee Duffy. That, that, that just shows you. Fuck he, he said, I just wanted to be happy with my mum. And he written that at his mum saying, I wish I was all with you, mum. And we well, had the good times and we went here and done that and all the stuff, you know what I mean? So it's weird. No matter how hard you are, they always cry for the mum, don't they? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. People are dying, get me mum, done. So. But it's all right for the guy who Walton said, oh, yeah, we'll beat the shit out of him. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, he's only five yeah. or six good, don't you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but in, in strange ways, well, when I was in with uh, Paul Massey's brother, Eddie Massey, and um, yeah. I was in um, Abrick, and I got up with all them, not, you know, with old Manchester, but what they always said to me, he said, we just stick most sick of the screws, we just started waiting our time, start fucking shooting them, they'd come out and they'd blow the fucking legs off and be shooting the tight, going up the house and blowing the fucking house up and everything, so it stopped all the bullying, and then they had that riot with their thing he went on the roof we were talking about Lord. Oh, Lord, yeah, yeah. yeah we had that, that, that riot and it stopped all the fucking carry on didn't it because they were like bullies weren't it? in them days you know they used to kick the shit out of people yeah never looked at me because I fucking I was just too big to throw about in them days but little lad to be six on one little lad I was fucking leave him alone and jump in a few times you know and, and uh, but but then you know, get back oh, I fell down the stairs and all the shit stories but they can't do it now because of the cameras so it's a good thing the cameras now but, um, you was were in a bad place weren't you America. Sheriff Joe Pyle's place, yeah. That's what, what was notorious. it like? No, to me, this is another thing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm doing, going to, Jimmy doesn't know this, I'm going to be doing yeah. a, a boot on prisons. Yeah. I think it's good to tell kids what it's really like. 
Wait, I get some stuff off you. Well, I've, got, when you I've, go got, in, I've you, got videos on the channel of guards mm, murdering mentally ill prisoners in that yeah, jail. Horrible, aren't they? Horrible. Yeah. But what I'm saying when you go to jail, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah. don't give a fuck yeah. who you are. Yeah. I went no. to jail, I was thinking, fucking hell, what am I going to do here? And fucking, it's scary going in there and they shut that door, you think, fucking hell, your little cell. I think a big fucking silver back in there, no bananas, a fuck all for me. Yeah. Sat in the little cell, fucking 20 hours a day. And then when I kicked off and I threw them all over the place, they put me in solitary and they used to have two Alsatians and 12 screws take me for it. And there'd be like a big cage, you know, like a solitary thing. Yeah. And they'd have people going around there. I was going outside a box, you know, a bit like Charlie Bronson mm -hmm. with this. And uh, it's fucking horrible. And you're in that cell and we used to have to piss and do your business in a little bucket. I remember um, segregation. It was like down on the. You don't hate. We call it GOD. Like it's called GOD, good yeah. order and discipline. But you were only on with the nonces. Yeah. And then onto the uh, three fucking eyes and four legs. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with Brian? I used to think, oh, cheers, mate, you're a lovely lad. Because I used to think, if you say you're horrible, they'll spit in your food. Yeah, so yeah, I used to yeah. think, don't be calling them, so I'll be nice to them. Bye, you're looking well today, mate. Fucking horrible, they're like rapists and all that. But the scariest one I ever come across was there was one in, he used to fire his teeth and he was a vampire, he killed the baby and drank the blood. Oh, fucking shit. And he really fucking scared me. Some I, big fuckers I just, as well, I though. Want, I really wanted to break his break job. When I was in Liverpool, it was a Steve Collins, <coughs> who was the run of the doors, Mark Styles. They used to have cream. Oh, yeah, right, I was, right, right. I was in with them, good lads. I was going to have a fight with the lad here for Kevin McBride, was it? McBride. And he got got shot to death in the gym. I was supposed to have a fight with him for, for them. Um, when I was in jail at Havrick, he was in there, he was a bully in there, but he got out and somebody came up and said, Do you want to spot me? And they spotted him in the gym or something. And shot him in the fucking bench, shot him, killed him. I think they did a movie years ago called Shooters, yeah. where it shows that they'd, yeah. that they go and have one on ones with like fucking yeah. Manchester fucking. That Manchester never all. When I was in, you like this story. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when, yeah. I in, when I was in, when I was in, when I was in Avrik, it was all Manchester and Liverpool, and I said, oh, for fuck's sake, will yeah? And they'd be on, I was a Man U fan because my uncle played <laughs> Frank McGivern, my uncle played yeah. for Man United. He was, on, he was in the youth team, but he played his best mate with Sammy McElroy and that, and Lou McCarley and them. And I'd be there, so I used to go, I, was, I couldn't be. I was in Avrik, 600, I think 600 prisoners. And one day it, was, it was snowed. So there was like, say, the Manchester, the other one, then it was 30 on there, 30 on that side, I thought, so I walked between them, they all went. They all stood. I was like Mother Teresa walking through. Don't be yeah, dead. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. It was just one of those things, you know. And what I'd done is, because I'd been in every jail I was going, I was fighting. I got moved from Durham. Got moved from um, Home House. Uh, I don't fucking home house because I, I, like I had too much pull with all the screws. I knew where they lived and everything, so they were scared. Yeah. So then they sent me to Durham and I knew screws were up there. And then they sent me from there to Ackland and they wouldn't have me in there. Ackland too is my favourite. Well, they've sent me there and they said, no, we're not having them here. So they said, for fuck's sake, I went, I'll, I'll, I'll do more miles than I'll in Wicker. And yeah. So they sent me to Havrick and I thought the black sheep of the family was just the same. black sheep in the hills. I thought, where the fuck am I? And it was in the middle of nowhere. And apparently it was like, an, it used to be an RAF base. And in the winter, when we were there, the, the helicopters used to drop us food parcels because they couldn't get in. And get the, the, the screws had to get there. It was like billets, you know, like army billets. And you could you could go in into this pads and everything, the door, but the doors would be shut. But when a fest went in, it was a big steel, um, when you first go in, what's it called when you first go in? Induction. induction. When you go in the induction, I'm in there and I seen a dog walking with fucking socks on. I thought, what the? Did they cock a spy on? And it was a drug dog sniffing and they'd go, number 12's gone, number 14, all that. And they'd raise the next day. Anyway, when I was in there, I got, there was a bench press competition and there were, there were loads in there. And there was two Mr. Universes coming. Yeah. And the, and the record was something like 25 reps or something. I got 77, but I was full of flow. I hadn't trained for months and I got, got, still got the big statue with the, the, the thing. I won that and I did a. Uh, um, my first aid and everything, I did some like little, little that things and that, you know, there, um, maths and English things and all that, so just to keep you occupied. Type they have of big thing. fuck off seagulls in Africa, don't they? Oh, we? you know what, mate? There's a little like, like big as that and I thought, you must get out of here. The there, isn't it? The fucking, yeah, the, the waste power station. So I thought, they're eating that, they're getting bigger. I was like, I get some air injected in me, I'll be getting fucking bigger. I'll get, <laughs> if I could get them seagulls, six of them, I'd be able to fly over the fucking fence. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get back to Teesside. Get a couple of them and fucking meal for a week. So anyway, uh, um, two scousers, or, or three scousers escaped. Three days later, they're knocking on the door. We're freezing, can you let us in? We're fucking middle of the night. We're fucking freezing. But, uh, yeah, fucking, that havrick, when we were up there with the Manchester, I know what I used to do. They'd have the football on and I'd come in, I'd turn it off and I'd black them on film like fucking uh, 
the African Queen was on. <laughs> Nobody said fuck off. <laughs> I don't worry, fucking mind you, know, I was a cunt. But it was, uh, but what it was, I, I got to that jail, and I had obviously a reputation, but not as like, you know, a lot of people didn't know me. Yeah. So I went on the bag, so he held the bag, this lad, big lad from Liverpool. I went to the bag and I delivered about 20 shots. I delivered McIntyre and went, fucking hell, you'll kill someone if you hit him with one of them shots. And then the same with Scott, like, I was doing about six, seven hundred pounds, not as much as I was when on the out. And I was benching like four, five hundred pounds in the bit in there. And they're saying the size of me, I'd be top off and all that. So I, I thought, I'll show them how good I am on the, the power. And the, the, obviously it scared a lot of them, obviously. It's sick, but the, I was yeah. a gentle giant with people. I mean, there was two little black lads using the phone, people pushing in. I can't stand that, mate. If you're the cure, no you, bullies. No bullies. And people were getting pad robbed, you know, the pads robbed, and I stopped all that. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was good. And then the one fucking he had a fight when I broke his jaw and I got shipped out. And they took me to Liverpool. But when I went to Liverpool, I was only there six weeks. Then I went to Wheelston. But they put me in Thorp, went to Thorpe Park, they wouldn't have me. Then they put me in Wheelston. Fucking hell, they frog marching around, like, oh, didn't they? Oh, yeah, that was, I only did uh, 15, 15 months, I did. I was Shit, I did, yeah, I did 15 months. I, did, yeah. I got two and a half years for street robbery. But it was dead basic, really. Yeah. I did five months in Walton, waiting for an allocation. Yeah. And then I went to Acklington, yeah. Northumberland, up Morpeth. I did five months there, and I finished off at Home House, Dots and Seas. Yeah. Five months there. And it was like, easy, I might have lost a couple of weeks fighting in yeah. uh, Home House. I had a couple yeah. of fights on the yard. Yeah, but, where are you from? You're from, where, where are you from? No, oh, we Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. all right, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. So how long have you known each other since school? Since then? kids. All oh, right. We're different schools. Right. So since kids, yeah. So how did you get together? What was the, what's the thingy? This is the Brad Cockle show, by the way. <laughs> 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 it was a little better interview with the us. Our first scam together as kids was going in the pubs and saying that the bandit machine hadn't paid out the jackpot. Oh. And we'd go from pub to pub to pub to pub. Yeah. And we'd get the bus and go somewhere else, another town, or Liverpool, Manchester, everywhere. Well, can you remember the scam with the like duct tape and you'd put it on a, a ten coin. pence? And you could put it in, get 50 pence back. Yeah. We used to go to Blackpool and do it and places mm. like that. And we went there one day and we got, you know them gonks that you put, like, the thing goes, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Up. Mm. and you, you never fucking win. Maybe oh, every, that thing, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. This, this day, me and my mate went on, we put the money in and we won fucking 50 gonks, 40, 50 gonks we won. It got stuck. It was just fucking picking them up. And the man went and said, I said, fuck off. And it was massive. And it was I'm having it. I fucking I put my money on him and he was going, read the paper. And I, I've won another. I was me. Like, fucking brilliant. And we ended up with 50 gongs or something. And he sold them for like £1.50 each or something in the shops because he had a little corner shop. I swear, yeah, okay. It's like, I know, cause oh. that one where the money comes out, then slow like that. I don't bump I did, and then the bloke would come thing. running out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, they used to have. Um, they told you your coins when I was out, you know. Oh, right. old pennies. And you used to go, used to go to the shop and you used to get, you used to, I think it was so, so many hundred pennies to a pound. Yeah. And then when the decimalisation came out in 1972, I think it was, it was only hundred pennies to a pound. So that was a big scam, wasn't it, you know? You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I used to get the Victorian penny and, and you go and you used to get ice lollies, they were on a, just on a piece of, like a lolly stick. Yeah. And they were just the basic things, you know. Now it's just phenomenal what kids get in it, just unreal. Expensive as well, though, aren't mm, they? Yeah. I was three three pence when I was a kid. Uh, Mars bars, three pence for a Mars bar. Yeah, so.